he want 200 million for for benavidez and he want 150 million to fight me of 2030 in our country to do and deliver to the market the best fight with good price mm. and make the fight that people want to see in a shocking turn of events Turkey Alal Sheikh has slammed Canelo Alvarez for avoiding a fight with Terence Crawford. Meanwhile, Crawford is facing criticism over whether he could truly hold his own against Canelo if they ever squared off. The debate intensifies when considering Madrimov's slightly more refined technique compared to Canelo's, who, while capable of pressing Crawford, doesn't have the same level of head movement. However, it's crucial to remember the importance of weight classes. Canelo's relentless pressure could overwhelm Crawford, especially given that Crawford, despite putting on an admirable performance, struggled against Madrimov. A common challenge for many Eastern European fighters, like Madrimov, is their rapid rise through the professional ranks due to their stellar amateur careers. This swift transition often leaves them with little time to build a significant reputation, leading to a lack of recognition on the world stage. Madrimov experienced this firsthand, Initially, he wasn't widely known, but his reputation grew even in defeat, as his skills became evident to all. In a bout against the world's top pound-for-pound -pound fighter, both competitors showcased exceptional intelligence and skill. The match was so closely contested that a draw might have been the most just outcome. Oh, I mean, it's one thing. I mean, I wouldn't think that Canelo watched Crawford on Saturday and was afraid of fighting him at 68. I think for Canelo, it's more about the, the credibility he gets through victory. Now, I think he's a little bit concerned, having spoke to him in the past, that if he beats a guy that's coming up from 147 to 168, is he really going to get the respect for that? So, um, we'll see. I mean, money talks. You know, if, if it's the right deal, he'll always take the fight. Crawford may not be the most powerful puncher in the 154-pound division, but his exceptional ring IQ enables him to hold his own against any opponent, even though there are inherent risks. At 36, he's competing in a highly challenging landscape, making potential matchups with fighters like Tim Tezu, Sebastian Fundora, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Sir Hebo Hachuk, or even a rematch with Madrimov particularly exciting. Interestingly, while the talent pool at 160 albs seems a bit thinner, the jump to 168 albs looks daunting and possibly too ambitious, especially after Crawford's dominant victory over Errol Spence at 147 albs. The buzz about him moving up to face Canelo at 168 albs left me puzzled, but I wouldn't dismiss the possibility of it happening. Canelo is expected to be the favorite in his upcoming September bout against Edgar Berlanga, who has struggled at the world level and is now stepping up in competition. If Canelo decides to bypass fighting his biggest threats at 168 lobs, like David Benavides or David Morrill, his options narrow significantly, setting the stage for a potential Canelo Crawford showdown as soon as May 2025. If Crawford stays at 154 lobs, where he arguably belongs, he'll be a key player in one of boxing's most competitive weight classes. The upcoming bout between Ortiz Jr., who I slightly favor, and Bohachip this Saturday is so intriguing that even the loser could still be a viable future challenger. Kishu shouldn't be sidelined due to his injury against Fundora either, and a rematch with Madrimov would be equally captivating. How is Crawford going to be able to bridge this weight gap? Yeah, I don't think he can, all. in all honesty. I mean, yeah. he might not be able to bridge it on Saturday. Yeah. So, oh, one weight six, class. 68, yeah, but you're coming up from 35. Mm. 35, 40, 47, 54. Sooner or later, it's one too many. Mm. And 68 is definitely too many. But Crawford's brilliant. Like he's a, he's a genius. He's a generational great. So maybe he can find a way to do it. But I feel he'd be he'd be hugely outsized against Canelo. Canelo Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah. But you have to move your use your movement if you're Terence Crawford in that fight. The last thing you want to do is stand and trade. He'd be moving a lot in that fight. Trust me. I'm not saying he'd be running. Yeah. But he would be moving a lot. Mm. Of course. Terence Crawford made an impressive debut at 154 olds securing a unanimous decision victory over the previously undefeated Madrimov. Despite Madrimov's relentless efforts and powerful shots that kept him in contention until the final bell, Crawford emerged victorious. This win followed his career-defining triumph over Errol Spence Jr. last year, where he asserted his dominance and stopped his welterweight adversary in the ninth round. Now, Crawford is eyeing a bigger challenge, the 168 Lobs champion, Saul Canelo Alvarez. For Crawford, 
Moving up to super middleweight would mean jumping two weight classes from where he began his professional career at 135 OBS. Initially, Canelo brushed off the idea, arguing that a win over a smaller opponent wouldn't earn him much respect. However, his stance has softened recently, as he's now open to the fight, provided the financial terms are appealing. With Turkey Alal Sheikh, an influential figure driving major boxing events in Saudi Arabia, prominently placing this matchup on his agenda, Canelo might just see his conditions fulfilled. Boxing legend Evander Holyfield expressed astonishment at the idea of Crawford moving up 21 albs to challenge Canelo. He foresaw the larger fighter emerging victorious, stating, It's going to be hard for him to beat Canelo. He's really basic, but he's a good fighter. After witnessing Crawford's strong but competitive performance at super welterweight, many fans would agree with Holyfield. When asked about the significance of a fight with Canelo after his win, Crawford said, You know what I say. If the money's right, we gotta fight. At the same time, he's got a fight that he's focused on. I'm going to go back to my family and enjoy this win, enjoy all the accomplishments that I've made in the sport of boxing. He further added, Not at all. I'm pretty sure he could fight at 168. This guy is big in the amateurs. He fought at a higher weight than he is now, and he was very competitive. The Canelo fight is not so important to me. It's just another milestone to greatness, I suppose, and financially. Canelo will step into the ring on September 14th to face the undefeated Puerto Rican contender Edgar Berlanga. Should Canelo retain his WBC and WBO super middleweight titles, boxing enthusiasts might be treated to the highly anticipated showdown between Canelo and Crawford as early as next year. Crawford's bout with Madramove was a grueling battle that went the full distance, something the 36-year-old from Omaha hadn't experienced in his last 11 fights. Despite some controversy over the scorecards, few dispute that Crawford's victory was well-earned. The bout drew the attention of boxing legends past and present, including Mike Tyson, Roberto Duran, Shakur Stevenson, and Devin Haney. Haney, who watched the fight closely, commented that Crawford was clearly winning despite Madrimov putting up a good fight, noting that styles make fights, though, it's boxing. The buzz around Crawford's light middleweight debut has reignited discussions about a potential matchup with Canelo, intensifying debate within the boxing community. Michael Benson shared Usyk's response on Twitter after being asked about the potential Crawford Canelo fight during an interview on the Three Knockdown Rule podcast. Usyk, a close friend of Crawford, confidently predicted that Crawford would win, highlighting Crawford's intelligence and versatility. However, the potential clash remains a fantasy for now. While Turkey Alal Sheikh has voiced enthusiasm for the matchup, and social media is buzzing with predictions, the significant weight disparity continues to stir unease among fans and analysts. Anthony Fowler, a Commonwealth Games gold medalist and former professional boxer, is backing Canelo for the victory, emphasizing that weight classes are pivotal in boxing outcomes. Fowler asserts that Alvarez's dominance in the 168 pounds division positions him as the undeniable frontrunner. To him, I'm a threat to his legacy because it would be crazy for a guy that started at 135 to come all the way up to 168. Yo, weight, no catch weight, no none of that. And the speculation around Terence Crawford's potential fight against Saul Canelo Alvarez has sparked a wide range of opinions among boxing fans and experts. Given Crawford's experience and ring IQ, some believe he could give Canelo a real challenge. However, doubts linger about Crawford's ability to handle Canelo's power, especially considering how Yuri Orcas Gambo rattled him back in 2014. Fans are quick to point out that if Gambo could shake Crawford, Alvarez, with his well-documented power, could pose an even bigger threat. Some fans even cheekily suggested that Crawford might want to ask Jermel Charlo what it feels like to be on the receiving end of Canelo's punches. They predict that a fight between Crawford and Alvarez could conclude as early as the sixth round, with Canelo emerging victorious. Despite this, there is a contingent of fans, including heavyweight champion Oleksandr Yusik, who believe that Crawford's exceptional movement, reflexes, and punching power could allow him to take control of the fight, even if Canelo's rock-solid chin prevents a knockout. These supporters argue that Crawford's ability to adapt and his tactical intelligence, traits he shares with Floyd Mayweather Jr., who famously outboxed Canelo in 2013, could give him the best chance of securing a victory. Mayweather's approach, 
relying on superior technical prowess to outmaneuver Canelo, is seen as a potential blueprint for Crawford if he hopes to beat the Mexican star. Sean Porter, a former opponent of Crawford's who was stopped by him in 2021, also believes that Crawford could beat Canelo in a major battle. Porter acknowledges that while it would be an upset in some ways, it's not far-fetched to believe Crawford has what it takes to pull off a victory. He describes Crawford as a stone-cold athlete with an intellect that's unmatched in the sport, making him a serious threat to Canelo. Errol Spence Jr., who recently suffered his first professional defeat at the hands of Crawford, has thrown his support behind his former rival. Spence stated that if anyone could defeat Canelo, it would be Crawford, given his pursuit of greatness. Spence's confidence in Crawford's abilities underscores the respect he has for him as a fighter, even after their intense rivalry. Crawford's decisive victory over Spence, where he sent him to the canvas three times before securing a TKO in the ninth round, solidified his status as one of boxing's elite. Both fighters have since transitioned to the super welterweight division, with Crawford poised to make his debut against WBA champion Israel Madrimov, while Spence is rumored to be negotiating a bout with Sebastian Fundora. Interestingly, Canelo himself weighed in on Crawford's recent performance against Madrimov, where Crawford won by unanimous decision. Canelo suggested that Madrimov might have deserved the victory, reflecting the close nature of the bout. Nevertheless, the victory has only intensified calls for a Crawford-Canelo showdown, with figures like Turkey Alal Sheikh from Saudi Arabia pushing for the fight to happen. As speculation continues, the potential Crawford vs. Canelo fight remains one of the most talked about matchups in boxing. While some believe Canelo's size and power make him the favorite, others think Crawford's skill and strategy could lead to an upset, making it a true 50 50 ets battle in the eyes of many. To him, I'm a threat to his legacy because it would be crazy for a guy that started at 135 to come all the way up to 168. Yo, wait, no catch weight, no none of that. And 